All right, I wanted to do a quick little overview on 115,000 brake volt breaker and how it operates. So these are the insulating tanks. There's one for each phase. Power comes in and it goes down through that bushing and there are interrupters. And then it goes back out there, each phase. Now, normally the power has to be about that far away from ground. But as it goes down into these bushings, there are, there, there's a special insulating gas in here called SF6, which allows it to be much closer to ground. And inside, when this circuit breaker breaks the circuit, there are interrupters that come apart and it actually puffs SF6 into that and it times it so that at the zero crossing, which is a different conversation, it's able to break a very large current at a very high voltage, which would not happen with just switches opening and closing. It has to happen through a special mechanism that does it fast with insulating gas like this. So that's what this does. And the way that that mechanism works is all three of these poles are tied together by these rods and then that goes down into an operating mechanism. And this operating mechanism can be triggered a number of different ways, which we won't get into that, but it's spring operated. So there's actually springs on this side and springs on that side. These are the closing springs that those contacts come together to make a circuit. And then these are the trip springs and they break the circuit. So the way that this works is those springs are charged by a motor and uh, if you can see it down here, there's a motor in the back and that turns and it cranks this thing. And then this mechanism right now, it's, it's in a discharged state. But when it's charged, this will tell you that it's charged. This is discharged and open, which basically means all the uh, potential energy is not in this breaker. When it's normally operating, the mechanism will be the the breaker will be closed and the mechanism will be charged. And the way that it works is these things are designed so that even in the absence of all power, this thing can still do its primary function, which is to break a 115,000 volt circuit in a fault condition. And so this here is the closing springs and it's hard to see in there, but you, if you can see, they're pretty thick and beefy comparatively to the trip springs they're not they're not as thick around and so the way this works is when the breaker closes when those when those springs release and they cause the breaker to close that is what actually charges these trip springs and so for the breaker to be closed it has to have the ability to trip because as it's closing it's giving itself trip power and that's that's a, the design of all good breakers is that they can always trip no matter what and so as soon as these discharge and close the breaker that motor will run and it'll charge those springs again so the breaker will be closed with these springs charged and those springs charged so that even in the loss of power it could trip and then these springs could close the breaker again giving it another trip and then it could trip again before it finds its final resting place here where it's fully discharged and in the open position with the, with the breakers parted. So that's just a real quick overview on how these things work and how they do their job.